Hey everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab and I've got an awesome video for you today because I am checking out the latest collaborations between water block manufacturer EK and motherboard manufacturer MSI and we've got two of their latest collaboration products here with me today. We have in the AMD corner, we have the MPG X570S Carbon EKX motherboard and also in the Intel corner, we have the MPG Z690 Carbon EKX. So X570 chipset then obviously compatible with AMD's Ryzen 3000 and 5000 CPUs and upcoming 3D Vcash models as well. And the Z690 model that we've got here, fresh off, fresh off the press, Z690, obviously compatible with Intel's brand new Alder Lake 12th gen CPUs. So whether you're batting for AMD or Intel, the guys at MSI and EK have something for you. And the key thing about these motherboards, of course, is that they come with pretty much everything you need to water cool, not just your CPU, but the VRMs on your motherboard. And in the case of this one, a little bit more extra um, in terms of cooling as well. So what we've got here then are some very complete packages. And uh, from my point of view, having water cooled my own PC for about the last however many years, like 18 years or something, 2002, 2003, that I first got into, into water cooling. Um, these things are fantastic because you get, as I say, a lot of stuff that you already need in order to water cool your PC. And the monoblocks, uh, monoblock being a water block that cools various different hotspots on your motherboard, included with these products, as well as the fantastic EK leak testing tool, which I will talk about a bit more about later. But it's a fantastic tool that anybody that is getting into water cooling or, or is already into water cooling should own. Uh, personally, I use it all the time on every single build that I do, just to make sure that there are no potential leaks in that system before I even fill it full of coolant. It's a really, really cool idea. And what we'll be doing today is building a really great water cool PC using some off the shelf components with the X570 version down here. And we will be strapping the Z690 Carbon EKX, or as you can already see, I've already strapped it to my water cool test bench Cosmo. So we will be uh, putting the Z690 board through its paces because I wanna do a little bit of extra testing because it's got a few, or well, one extra um, cooling part which is the M.2 heatsink. So usually on these motherboards you get a VRM cooling portion, on the monoblock you get a CPU cooling portion so the monoblock will cool both your VRMs and the CPU with a single inlet and outlet which is what you can see there. So no plumbing in thousands of tubes to different, different components, just a single inlet and outlet. But on the Z690 model which we'll talk about later we have an additional component with the M.2 extension. So basically the top slot on the uh, the top M.2 slot, slot, should I say, on this motherboard is water cooled. So we'll be looking at that in a bit more testing with some more eye candy on uh, on Cosmo here. So building a great PC, a uh, great water cooled PC with the X570 board and already looking at Cosmo here with some uh, thermal testing etc with the Z690 board. So lots of cool stuff coming in this video, lots of eye candy and hopefully some good performance numbers as well. So Thank you to EK and MSI for sending these models over. And all that's left to do really before we crack on is to ask you to subscribe to my channel. It means a lot to have your support, got lots of cool stuff coming up. And also don't forget to like and comment on this video as well. Do you like these products? If you're going for one, are you going for the Intel one or the AMD version? And what CPU are you gonna be using it with? And do you think it's a good idea? Um, do you think it's a, a, a good plan from these guys to include a water block? with these motherboards, um, including the EK uh, leak testing tool. Something I should add is that these components available separately actually cost more than they do in the pack. So that's another benefit. Always love hearing your guys' comments um, on your own systems on this video and the products that I'm reviewing. So don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. So let's crack on. So I uh, thought it'd be fun to actually look and see what you actually get in the box with these motherboards. And this is the MPG X570S Carbon EKX, but the Z690 board uh, was, was pretty much identical to be honest inside. So what you're getting in here is nearly identical to what you will be getting in most of these boards. So as we can see, uh, the motherboard, it did actually have the anti-static wrapper on. I've just removed that uh, for videoing purposes to make my life easier with uh, with one hand at the moment so 
Um, this is how the motherboard, com motherboard comes. As you can see, all the heat sinks that would usually be covering the VRMs in that area are removed, so you don't have to remove those. Obviously, the flip side of that, they're not included in the box, unfortunately, and that basically means that the motherboard is cheaper, but it means that if you decide to air cool your PC at some point, um, you basically won't be able to with this board because you will need the water block attached and to be water cooled to actually cool the VRMs. Um, the CPU, of course, you can just stick an air cooler on there, but you can't do the same with the VRMs. So that's kind of the flip side of having everything removed. Um, I think they might have included the heat sinks in some of the earlier models in the box, but you're getting a much che a cheaper deal doing it this way. And to be honest, um, the only reasons you'd want to air cool your board is maybe if you had a pump failure or something like that. Those are extremely rare these days with modern water cooling components. And potentially also selling um, your kit or your motherboard um, on eBay or something in a couple of years time when you want to upgrade. Uh, you won't be able to sell it as an air-cooled board, you'd have to sell it with all the components here as a water-cooled option. So, but with water cooling being pretty mainstream these days, I don't think that would be too much of a problem either. Um, so if I just uh, get the motherboard out here, uh, proving to be a little bit of a challenge because it's stuck in there. And um, yeah, so as you can see, all the heat sinks are removed. There's no thermal paste or, any the or thermal pads on there at all. You need to apply those using the kit that we'll look at in a second. Uh, pretty, uh, pretty solid PCB, no major issues there in terms of clearance. Obviously not too fussed about clearance because you know the water block is gonna fit anyway, which is another great reason to consider boards like this. And um, loads of um, heat sinks on the motherboard as well to deal with those M.2 ports at the south end of the motherboard. On the IO panel, a pretty good number of type A ports. I'm counting, what is that, nine there? Nine type, nine type, a, port, uh, type a USB ports and they are uh, mostly um, high speed as well. So there's just two USB 2 ports, all the rest are high, higher speed. CMOS clear button and uh, USB BIOS flashback down there as well, as you can see on the end of the board. So a couple of overclocking and testing tools included. Um, 2.5 gigabit LAN, a uh, USB type C port, but that doesn't have Thunderbolt and the full complement of audio outputs on the IO panel. So let's put the motherboard to one side for a moment and see what else we get in the box. So here is the lovely monoblock. And as you can see, slightly shorter than the Z690 model uh, because it doesn't have that M.2 port cooling uh, capability. This is a slightly older model than the Z690 board. Um, so maybe MSI will um, and EK will include M.2 water cooling in future. But pretty similar design. Um, you get the flow indicator up the top there. You get the CPU uh, cooling section down there. A, um, a sort of a, a carbon finish on that side uh, in that corner on that that black section, flipping it over. And as you can see, there are four screws to uh, secure the CPU. And there are a bunch of VRM sections as well, VRM uh, screw holes that you need to uh, that you need to deal with too. They just secure from the rear side of the motherboard and just help to apply a bit of pressure onto the VRMs. So the next component that we're gonna take a look at is the um, EK leak testing tool. Um, in fact, we won't take a look at it here because I need to open the box, but we'll have a look at a, uh, how to actually set it up and use it uh, with your motherboard to leak test, but that's really nice to include as well. And that kind of adds the value to this pack because uh, you're basically getting this, which is worth around uh, $40, I think. It's around 35 euros, 30 pounds here in the UK. So a really, really great tool. And that with the monoblock, which usually retails for around, um, around 150 to 200 pounds in the, here in the UK, probably a bit more than that in dollars, means that combined with the motherboard, you're actually getting a really, really good deal here. Um, so really, really great to see that from, um, from EK to include that in the... Uh, in the box as well so pretty much everything you need um, apart from your own fittings and the rest of the hardware but certainly in terms of testing and monoblocks and things you know that everything is going to be compatible so in the box uh, pretty standard set of components except this is where you'll find the water cooling um, parts to secure the block to your motherboard so you've got the uh, back plate for socket am4 of course with this board um, a bunch of screws uh, with thermal paste so thermal paste is included um, also, where have they gone? Uh, the thermal pads. So there are a couple of different heights in here. You need to follow the uh, manual on the website. So on the side of the box somewhere, um, yeah, it's actually down there. You can see it. There is a QR code 
you need to scan that on your mobile or whatever and uh, get at the manual for this board because it's really important to make sure you use the right screws in the right places and also to use the thermal pads in the right places as well because these are different thicknesses i think you've got like one mil and 1.5 mil on there the z690 board i think was even thicker because you need to use two mil thick thermal pads for the Envil 2 slot. So yeah, just make sure with both of these boards that you scan that QR code and you make sure that you're using the right thermal pads in the right place. So all the rest of the stuff, pretty standard instruction manual there. You get uh, an aerial for the 802.11ac or AX Wi-Fi, I believe it is, uh, RGB cables, USB driver disc is pretty cool as well. Um, and that is pretty much it from the unboxing and uh, looking at the Z690 board as well. So we are going to crack on and look at the testing and also building the PC using this motherboard here. So let's crack on.
Okay, so here we are with the build so far. So the water cooling system is installed, the motherboard, SSD, and graphics card are installed. That's a uh, 6900 XT down there. And um, the case is the Be Quiet Silent Base 802. Um, I absolutely love this case. I've never actually built a water cool case in it before, but uh, I reviewed it a couple of years ago for um, a custom PC magazine and just loved the way that it was so flexible. It's got excellent airflow and all the panels come off as you probably saw in the video earlier. And uh, just an absolutely awesome and easy case to work with whether you're air cooling or water cooling your PC and uh, we'll be throwing a uh, Be Quiet power supply in here in a minute as well. So you can see the um, FLT reservoir there from uh, which is AMD branded that was uh, sent over as part of a, an EK care pack a while a while ago so it looks really really cool with the AMD logo on there and uh, EK fittings of course the um, satin ends with uh, nickel uh, angled fittings and of course the X570S carbon EKX motherboard at the back there so we've got the graphics card in a vertical mount um, sitting yeah a little bit close to the side panel but um, this is just like an example build of what you can do in this in this fantastic case so I'm not too fussed about that right now and uh, loving these uh, Varda X3M digital RGB fans from EK as well they just look uh, really really cool in there and uh, lots of static pressure and uh, really interesting mount as well but they uh, they feel they look and feel really really premium and finally i get to use this funky tubing from ek as well so uh, i've been wanting to use this for a while um, i was going to do hardline rigid tubing on this build but i had some of this tubing that i've been meaning to use for ages as well as the fittings and um, it's kind of like uh feels like rubber like slash neoprene type material and uh, i absolutely love it it's super easy to get a straight cut uh, just using a standard uh, tube cutting tool like one of those and um, it just it's really really kink proof as well I mean, you can see the bend around here if I'd done that with standard tubing uh, that would almost certainly have kinked around there but it's um, it's super super strong and very anti uh, anti kink uh, just due to the, the the depth of the walls and I think it looks really cool as well like in a dark case like this um, I think it looks absolutely fantastic so I'm definitely going to consider using this for uh, for my builds in future instead of rigid tubing um, obviously it's a lot a heck of a lot easier to work with but I, th I think it actually looks really great as well compared to uh, the normal the compared to the normal stuff so let's get the power supply in and uh, fire it up Here is the finished build with all the power cables installed and I was just wanted to show you the EK Elite Tester tool. So here, as you can see, we've got it set to about 0.3 bar on the gauge and that is what you need to have it at for testing an entire loop. There are different pressures that you need for testing individual components. So as you can see, 0.3 bar or thereabouts on the, uh, on the gauge. And uh, what we're actually looking at for looking at here is just making sure that that gauge doesn't fall. So you need to lock off the uh, the valve here, having pumped it up with this thing down here. Uh, lock it off once you reach 0.3 bar, and basically just uh, just leave it there for uh, probably five or ten minutes, just to make sure that that uh, that needle that gauge stays there like that. And what it can indicate if it's uh, dropping at all is that some of the fittings like it could be an actual fitting down here or it could be one of the ports on the reservoir or something like that any of those things might just not be tightened up as much as they as they should be and it's a really really easy thing to do if you're trying to build your water cool pc as quickly as possible and um, just putting everything together and even as you're attaching the tubing and locking off the uh, the rings that you can see here the compression fitting uh, locking rings even just doing that sometimes can dislodge a fitting and um, just kind of make it uh, just p basically become a potential risk if you're going to be water cooling your PC. Um, if air can come out, you know, air is, um, is going to find its way out much more readily than water will. But 
if the uh, if the gate if you basically lock it all so it's airtight, then it's almost certainly going to be watertight. Um, that's just the way things go. So, as we can see here, it's still sitting at 0.3 bar on the uh, on the gauge. So we will disconnect the leak tester and uh, fill her up, and we're ready to go. Okay, so here we are with the X570 board, and as you can see, I've got Prime95 running in the background, and we've got the CPU temperature and the VRM or MOS temperature down here. So VRM temperature we'll start with then, and we can see that uh, for the last 10-15 minutes under full load in Prime95, using the smallest FFT test to load all cores and threads, we've got a peak VRM temperature of 36.5 degrees, so that's after a good 10 to 15 minutes of full load. Um, typically, that's going to be about 20 degrees lower than what you would see with heat sinks on the motherboard. Most decent cooled motherboards in terms of VRMs have VRM temperatures of around 50 to 55 degrees C, so this is easily 20 degrees lower than some of the better performing boards out there just with heat sinks, so a great result there for this board and certainly no reason to worry about the VRM temperatures with this motherboard. Obviously they might be slightly higher if you're overclocking but I very much doubt whether you'll see anything go above, much above 40 degrees, certainly not above 45 I would have thought. So moving on to the CPU temperature and we've got a peak CPU temperature here after 15 minutes in Prime 95 full loaded of 59 degrees C and this is of course with the Ryzen 9 5900X. And uh, that's pretty cool, easily on par with the very best uh, all-in-one liquid cooler temperature I've seen. In fact, given my uh, ambient temperature here and uh, from other tests I've done, the uh, best all-in-one liquid coolers typically go over uh, 60 degrees, maybe the mid-60s or something. So we're looking at uh, much, much cooler temperatures here. And the PC is actually sat right next to me now and the fans are basically barely spinning. They're just kind of ticking over because um, they just don't need to ramp up with the CPU at 59 degrees C. So you're getting that uh, super silent PC as well as superb cooling for the VRMs and the CPU. Okay, so switching to the Z690 board now then, and we've obviously got the addition of the drive temperature here because we are water cooling the M.2 SSD, in this case a WD PCI Express 4.0 SSD, which I think is the SN770 black or something like, or no, SN850, that's the one. Um, so the black is uh, pretty much the fastest SSD that uh, WD makes, uh, pushing 7,000 megabytes a second here on the read speed. And peak temperature of 37 degrees C, and this is after 15 minutes of continual stress testing with Crystal Disk Mark. And uh, the temperature does rise quite a bit when it does that. So 37 degrees C here, easily 20 degrees C or, or thereabouts lower than what I would expect using a uh, passively cooled heatsink. So clearly the motherboard's doing a great job. Uh, or should I, well, yeah, it kind of is the motherboard because the motherboard comes with the water block, but the water block's actually doing the hard work here. So 37 degrees C, as I say, about 20 degrees lower than what you would expect from a motherboard heatsink. And uh, not too low because you don't want the temperatures to be too low because the um, the actual memory on the uh, on the uh, on M.2 SSDs actually prefers to be reasonably warm uh, when it's in operation. So I believe around 40 degrees C um, is 
the sort of lowest temperature that they recommend you actually write data at to prevent sort of long-term de degradation and that kind of stuff. You certainly don't want to go lower than this uh, down to ambient, but as long as you're well above ambient, um, you know, between sort of 35 and 40 degrees C, that's kind of where you want to be. Um, firstly, to just keep your drive nice and cool and well away from throttling, but also not to introduce any long-term issues. So, that's after a good 15 minutes in crystal disk mark, as I say, and switching to the VRM temperatures on this board. And we've got a peak temperature here of 38 degrees C, and that's with Prime 95 having run for about the last 20, 25 minutes on the smallest FFTs test and uh, a pretty uh, hefty test there. That's with AVX uh, disabled and a 12600K. Obviously, slightly higher temperatures you might expect from the 12700K uh, or 12900K, or if you overclock this CPU, but Clearly, 38 degrees C is generally about 10 to 15 degrees Celsius lower, at least, than what I would see with this very CPU on other motherboards. So that's always worth bearing in mind that even though I'm not using the most powerful CPU in the socket at the moment, it's uh, but it's much, much cooler than I've seen on any other motherboard, thanks to the water-cooled VRMs. And uh, the CPU temperature, we'll just take a quick look over here to see what's going on. And uh, I think I've uh, flipped through that. So we've got a, uh, a peak CPU temperature here of 62 degrees C. And um, that's obviously with Prime 95 having run for about the last 20, 25 minutes now. So 62 degrees C is obviously uh, much higher than you would probably see in this situation if you were just gaming because your CPU won't be under 100% load all the time. So uh, this is typically maybe what you'd see um, in normal operation with a with a heatsink uh, cooler or an all-in-one liquid cooler after just maybe a minute or two under load. But here we've only reached this temperature uh, relatively. Uh, we've reached this temperature relatively recently. It's been slowly climbing as the coolant gets a little bit warmer. But uh, the fans, as you can see, the uh, the PC is again right beside me. Uh, Cosmo is right beside me, and you can, I can barely hear it. So that's a uh, a really good. A really good sign that this motherboard is working really, really well. Um, again, the CPU water block might not perform quite as well as a dedicated CPU water block, uh, just because there is a little bit more heat in the loop, and also the inlet and outlet aren't directly over the water block sections that cool the CPU. That can have a very small effect, but on the uh, positive side, you've got uh, the fact that you are water cooling the VRMs and M.2 heatsink as well so you can get rid of all that heat and dump it straight into your liquid cooling system which is a great idea. So what do we make of these two new products from EK and MSI then? Well in all honesty the fact that you're getting more for your money than you would be buying parts separately is exactly what a deal like this should should be. It should offer Bella value the fact that they're combining everything onto into a single packet into a single package should I say should can and should save you money and i like the way i uh, like the components that have been packaged in the way they have with the leak testing tool which is essential for anybody getting into water cooling and also with the motherboard the fact that it all the components have actually been removed off it that you need to so you don't need to do that just saves a bit of time and hassle the heat sinks can sometimes can get pretty stuck on these motherboards especially if you've used it first and the fact that you get that, it saves you a, you know an hour or so of fiddling around with heat sinks and stuff. It's ready to ready and primed to be water cooled, and for less money than you can buy the parts separately for, I think that's a pretty good deal. And especially in with the uh, the Z690 version, I love the fact that the top M.2 slot is water cooled as well. Um, obviously, M.2 cooling, as we spoke about earlier, probably isn't gonna get you any perfor any more performance in fact it almost certainly won't but it's just nice knowing that that little bit a bit of, that little bit of extra heat that you'd have to be dealing with and worrying about is actually dealt with by by the liquid cooling system and um of course we're not really talking about you know chilling it to sub ambient temperatures we're just talking about reducing the um the thermals a little bit so it's nowhere near its thermal throttling headroom and yeah, I just love the design of these things. I think they look absolutely fantastic as hopefully, hopefully you've seen in this video. And if you can afford it, obviously the uh, Z690 version is pretty expensive um, as all Z690 boards are at the moment, unfortunately, but hopefully the prices will come down. But if you're in the market for something like a 12900K CPU, you know, a, a mid to high end graphics card or you're water cooling your, your graphics card as well, of course you can just plumb it straight into this, uh, into the loop. You just need to add a pump and radiator 
and uh, some fittings, then obviously EK, EK can help with that. This is a fantastic board for the money. Now you don't get a board that's like mega premium. Um, for example, the um, M EG, I think I got that right, uh, Z690 Unify is a fantastic motherboard uh, that's much more high end than this, but you can't buy that with a water block pre-installed. And if you just need Wi-Fi, premium VRMs and excellent EF EFI, uh, loads of M.2 ports, then this is pretty much all you need, this, this motherboard. It's certainly uh, gonna be more able to overclock the likes of the 12600K, 12700K and 12900K than something that's much, much cheaper. But for me, um, I think it's, it's kind of striking the right balance compared to what we saw with earlier iterations of these boards that did use quite cheap motherboards and then you put a you know expensive water block on it and then you expect someone to pay a premium price when they probably wouldn't be water cooling that motherboard in the first place these two boards are much more high end than they used to be um, so both company uh, lots of companies have just brought lower lower end um, lines into their motherboard ranges these days and these two and i kind of stand firmly on the mid to high end in, in terms of price and performance so and features of course so I want to again thank you, uh, thank you to MSI and EK for shipping me these products. I hope you liked the video. Do like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know if you're going to consider buying them. The buy links where available will be in the description below. So don't forget to check those out. And um, that's it from me. So take care, and I will speak to you soon.